Mr. B here. Many factors may affect the rate of a chemical reaction. These factors include the nature of the reacting particles, the temperature, the concentration of the reacting particles, the addition of a catalyst, as well as the pressure. In this video, I will explain how each of these factors will affect the rate of a chemical reaction. The nature of the reacting particles is very important in determining the rate of a chemical reaction. For example, when aqueous silver nitrate is mixed with aqueous sodium chloride, the reaction will proceed at a fast rate. This is due to the fact that the reacting particles are already separated into their respective ions. Therefore, when these two solutions are mixed, the reaction will proceed at a fast rate, since the ions are already separated and may easily interact to form products. In this case, the product will be a precipitate, silver chloride and of course, aqueous sodium nitrate. In the next example, hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas to produce water. This reaction should occur at a slower rate. When hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas, covalent bonds must be broken. This process takes time. Therefore, the reaction involving aqueous ionic compounds should occur faster than a reaction involving covalently bonded compounds. The concentration of the reactants is also important in determining the rate of a chemical reaction. In this example, hydrochloric acid reacts with zinc to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. If in one instance, the concentration of the hydrochloric acid is one molar, the reaction will proceed at a relatively fast rate. In other words, immediately upon adding the hydrochloric acid, the formation of products may easily be detected. In other words, this reaction will form a gas, which can be determined by watching the bubbles appear. However, if we now use a solution of 4 molar hydrochloric acid, the reaction will occur at a faster rate. In the first case, the zinc will be consumed. In the second case, the zinc will be consumed, but at a faster rate. is also very important in determining the rate of a chemical reaction. Consider the following example where hydrochloric acid reacts with zinc metal to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. When this reaction occurs at 273K or 0 degrees Celsius, the rate will be significantly slower than if the reaction occurred at 373K or 100 degrees Celsius. Increasing the temperature increases particle motion. An increase in particle motion will also increase the number of effective collisions, where effective collisions are those collisions that possess enough energy and a proper orientation to lead to a product. Therefore, the greater the temperature, the faster the reaction.
extent to which the reacting substances are in contact is also important in determining the rate of a chemical reaction. Increasing the points of contact or increasing the exposed surface will cause the reaction to proceed at a faster rate. This is known as surface area. Increasing the surface area of one or more of the substances that are reacting will increase the rate. Consider the following example where magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce products. In this case, magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. A reaction involving magnesium in the powdered form will react at a faster rate than a reaction involving magnesium ribbon. In the powdered form, more of the surface of the magnesium is exposed to interact with the hydrochloric acid. In essence, using the magnesium in the powdered form will tend to increase the number of effective collisions. Therefore, increasing the surface area of the substances that are reacting will also increase the reaction rate. The effect of a catalyst may best be illustrated by using a PE diagram. A PE diagram is an energy profile for a particular reaction. The PE diagram indicates the potential energy of the reactants, the potential energy of the products, the activation energy, in this case the activation energy for the forward reaction, and the activation energy for the reverse reaction. Notice that the activation energy for the reverse reaction includes delta H as well as the activation energy for the forward reaction. The total energy involved is, is represented as the energy of the activated complex. The addition of a catalyst to a reaction will tend to lower the activation energy. By lowering the activation energy, the reaction should proceed at a faster rate. The overall effect of a catalyst is to lower the activation energy of the forward reaction. It also lowers the activation energy of the reverse reaction. In addition, addition of a catalyst will lower the energy of the activated complex. Notice, however, that delta H, the potential energy of the reactants, and the potential energy of the products are all unaffected by a catalyst. In the case of reactions involving gases, the rate of the reaction may be increased by increasing the pressure. Increasing the pressure will cause the reacting particles to be forced closer together. This will increase the number of effective collisions. In this example, nitrogen gas reacts with hydrogen gas to produce ammonia. By increasing the pressure on this system, the nitrogen gas particles and the hydrogen gas particles are pushed closer together. This will make it much easier for these particles to collide to form a product. 